Welcome to Bourbon School, I'm Brian, and today I'm going to give you my list of bottles that I think are underappreciated, underrating, maybe don't get quite the attention they should here on Bourbon Tube. Coming up next. All right, guys, so a couple weeks ago, I did a video about bottles that everybody likes that we just don't get. Um, and people seem to like it. So I thought I'd go kind of in the opposite direction, but I didn't want to go exactly like with bottles we um, love that other people hate. Because it, it's, it's, I've seen quite a few videos actually lately. I've seen three or four different channels do that exact topic. So I tweaked it a little bit. It kind of went through the lab and went through many iterations, kind of like Iron Man suit. And I came up with bottles that are maybe not quite as popular as we think they should be. They're underrated, they're underappreciated, and that could be for a number of reasons. It could be they've been around a while and people have kind of moved on past them. Um, it could just be ones that maybe they're perceived to be uh, you know, lower end bourbons because they're uh, more cheap, they're, they're a better value. Uh, whatever it might be, I think these are bottles that don't get the love they should. Um, on whiskey tube. So I'm gonna get started right away with my first one. I'll go with the kind of lowest priced one. I'll, I, I guess I'll go low to high, how about that? So the first one I have on my underappreciated list is JW Dant. And I think this is, I mean, an exceptional value. It's a $17 bottle, at least where we are, it's $17. And it's a liter. And it's a bottled and bond Heaven Hill product. Um, and I think this is just, for what you're getting, it's an exceptional value. It's excellent to mix. And if you want to sip it neat, it's a nice warm up pour for the evening. Um, but you can't beat the price, $17. You don't see it very much, mostly because people are trying to talk about the latest and greatest. And we even said, we don't really go for a lot of these value bottles anymore, but I think this one's exceptional. It should be on your shelf and it doesn't get enough love, except from Whiskey Row. Uh, David on Whiskey Row loves this bottle and uh, I agree with him, it's a nice one. Okay, next on my list, I guess next highest as far as price goes uh, is Benchmark. And I can say, I will say, I wouldn't say this about every single bottle of Benchmark. Um, the ones in particular that I think are really good are this one here, the Full Proof. Um, the top floor is really nice, although the proof on that is kind of low. And then the single barrel, which I have right up here, are all really nice products. These are in the low to mid 20s as far as how much it is. I think that the Full Proof, I think the last time I got one of these, it was $24. Um, and it's 125 proof, uh, basically Buffalo Trace bourbon. Um, and so these are really, really great value. I know they became very popular when Buffalo Trace was kind of hard to get a hold of. And now I think people have kind of cooled off on them because guess what? You can get Buffalo Trace more easily. But if you live in an area where Buffalo Trace is up to 40 or $50, even if you can get it, uh, Benchmark is a really nice substitute for that. And the nice thing about this is, um, you know, a full proof bottle, it's 125 proof, it's great to sip, and you don't feel bad about making a stiffer cocktail with it. Um, I think Benchmark really deserves a lot of love because they're putting out a really good product at a really nice price. So if you have Benchmark in your area, check it out. Okay, next on my list is one that I have found a lot of people, this I guess would fall into the category of not necessarily underrated or underappreciated, but it definitely falls into the category of bottles that people don't like. Um, I've seen a lot of people who are very lukewarm or just don't like this bottle. And for us, we happen to really like it. It's Green River Bourbon. Now, I should make a qualification here I don't like any other version of Green River except for the one that comes in this horseshoe bottle. The ones that actually say Green River Bourbon. As far as I know, Blue Note is sourced from Green River. Don't like it. Um, also, this terrible uh, American Barrels, the one, it looks like a shotgun shell with a snake around it. It's awful. And I believe that is uh, also sourced from Green River. And I pretty sure that wheel horse is sourced from green river now i've only had the regular standard wheel horse bourbon but i do not like it at all i thought it was really really bad so green river uh in general 
Uh, the stuff they source out, I have not found to be really good, but this bottle here, or these bottles, the horseshoe bottle, like I said, are really, really good. I think the only one I didn't like as much is the foolproof. These single barrels are exceptional. They're hot. They definitely drink hot, but they are delicious. And I love the standard Green River Bourbon and the standard Re Green River Rye as well. So Green River Bourbon is one that I think there's a lot of people out there who are not so hot on Green River, but we really like it. Check out, especially if you find a single barrel, you definitely want one of these. All right, next up, I'm going to go with Still Austin. And I guess I should qualify this by saying, I guess Still Austin does get its due. All right. I wouldn't necessarily call it underrated by whiskey tubers because I think most people who enjoy Texas whiskey also kind of say this is one of the better ones out there. I guess my thing is there's a lot of hate for Texas whiskey and a lot of people don't even give it a chance. And I think that Still Austin maybe suffers from the fact that it's Texas whiskey and people maybe don't even want to pick it up. But these Still Austin cast strength bottles, um, and this happens to be a single barrel, um, they're so good. And I am hoping one day to get a Nancy pick. Um, you know, I have to be in Texas to get one or I'd have to kind of reach out to somebody like maybe Great Shot to get one sent my way. But um, I think that Still Austin is probably the best Texas whiskey I've had. And that's a limited sample. I'll, I will totally, totally admit that. But I think it's the best Texas whiskey I have. And I think even if people are kind of not high on Texas whiskey, Still Austin is one to go try. And those of you out there who kind of hum and haw about Texas whiskey, if you find one of these, grab it because I think it really will change your mind about what Texas whiskey can be. Okay, I know I said that there was one I didn't have here, but I kind of made a game time decision um, and changed up one of the ones I wanted to. I actually made a pretty long list and pared it down. And then the more I thought about it, um, the more I think this one is probably one that kind of fits the bill a little better. Um, it's Old Dominic. So Old Dominic Hewling Station, a couple years ago, this was my favorite bourbon of the year. I got this pick at Liquor Barn. You can see I'm, I'm nursing this one. I will not let this one run down to the end. I'm, I'm holding on for dear life because I can't get this in New York. But Old Dominic is one that I don't hear a lot about. They're down in Memphis. I know they do... Um, source from MGP, uh, but they really do some really nice bottles. So they've got like uh, the Hewling Station cast strength, they've got a weeded, they've got, um, you know, some single barrels. And I've seen, uh, I've actually seen a couple of these now, uh, hopefully becoming more popular. Uh, there's a Facebook group I'm in called Bourbon Together, and they actually just went down with some members down to Memphis and did an Old Dominic pick. Uh, but I think Old Dominic is really, really good stuff. And I know it's source whiskey, but you know what? Who cares? It, anybody who sources whiskey, they still have to do good things with it. And I think Old Dominic does really good things. I have enjoyed this bottle thoroughly. I don't see a lot of love for Old Dominic, but I think it's coming. I think this is going to be one you're going to see more and more in the coming year. Okay, last bottle is a classic, an oldie but a goodie, but I really do think this is a bottle that's completely underrated and overlooked because of all the other things that this distillery tends to do. And that is Maker's Mark Cask Strength. I think this is a totally underappreciated bottle. And I'll tell you right now, it was even underappreciated by us because I didn't have a bottle of this on the shelf for months. I kind of, it was like, eh, I'm not going to buy that. I'll get picks. I'll get, you know, and the maker's picks are exceptional. I did get a heart release. Like I thought, okay, I've got all these good ones. The maker's 46 cast strength is great, but here's the difference. And here's why I think this one needs a little more love. Heart release, 75 bucks a pick probably about 70 bucks. I just bought that Maker's 46 cast strength for 70 bucks. So that's even gone up a bit. This Maker's cast strength standard bottle, 40 bucks, 45 bucks. It's an exceptional value. And I think because, especially in the last few years with Maker's doing things like the BEP and the FEO2 and FEO1 and the heart release and the cellar aged, I think some of the more standard bottles get overlooked. You know, a regular maker's bottle certainly gets overlooked because it's 90 proof. It's more of a beginner bourbon. 
but this cask strength, it comes in at 110 proof. It's the same proof as getting a pick. It's the same proof, I believe, as my heart release. Well, my heart release is 112. But it's, you know, I think it's the same as this, 110.3. So I think this, for the price, is an excellent bottle that I think gets overlooked because of all the other expressions of makers that have been hitting the market. But this is one you definitely want to go back to and get on your shelf because it's an exceptional value and it's absolutely delicious. So go grab a maker's cast strength. All right, guys, so there's my list. Those are my underappreciated, underloved, maybe a little underrated bottles of bourbon just based on kind of what I see out there in the whiskey tubes. So first thing I want you to do is make sure you let me know in the comments, what are your underrated bottles? What is a bottle you love that maybe is a little underappreciated and doesn't get the love you think it should uh, on your favorite YouTube channel? And secondly, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, share, and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another episode of Bourbon School. And don't miss our live stream tonight at 9 p.m. Marie Ann and I are gonna be doing a Maker's Mark flight. We're gonna actually test out the heart release against Maker's 46 and the Maker's cast strength. And we're gonna give away a bottle of our Yellowstone store pick from Sheridan Wine and Liquors. So make sure you tune in 9 p.m. tonight. And uh, hopefully we'll see you there, guys. Cheers.